Okay, so we're given this uh, PDF here from the Pareto distribution and it's given as an f of x given beta equals beta uh, divided by x to the power of beta plus 1. And then the conditions of that is x is greater than 1 and beta is greater than 0. So what we're looking for now is the maximum likelihood estimator. So the likelihood of this function here, so the likelihood of beta, that equals the product of i equals 1 to n of all of these. So all, as many observations for x as we can see. So x i given beta. Okay, now we're not given any values for the observations. All we're given is the PDF. So now what we need to do now is try and take the log of this. So if we take the log on both sides, we end up with this. We get log of L of beta equals the log of the product from N or up to n, i equals 1, f of x i given beta. Okay, so there's one more bracket here. Okay, so we can term this as little l, so that's the usual terminology we can use here, that's fine. So that's now log likelihood. So that's log likelihood, little l beta. And now here, what can we do here? So we've taken the log of a product of all these PDFs. Well, as we know from uh, log property, when everything's a product and we take the log, we add each individual term that we're taking the product of. So that what we end up here with now is we get the sum from i equals one to n of the log of f of xi given b. I'll just put that in the brackets just to make it nice and easy to read. X and I given B. Okay, so now that would entail now is from one from I equals one to all the variables. However, that is we don't know, we're just given n. We're now going to add these up. Okay, so now what we ought to do is we're just going to substitute in now our function now for the PDF. So that is beta over x to the beta plus 1. So now we get this equals n, the summation that is i equals 1 to n of the log of this function here, beta over x to the beta plus 1. Okay, sticking with this log likelihood function. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll just take the log of this and then sum it all up because it's for all the ends. So now what we end up with, end up with is this is going to be n log b, so it's n times log of b. So this beta, let's just write that out different for you. So beta over x to the beta plus 1. This is also beta times 1 over x to the beta plus 1. We can write it that way as well if we like. So now this log likelihood for beta, this now equals, taking the log of this, that's n log beta, and then the log of this with respect to beta, just going to have to be a little bit careful. So the b plus 1 is in the denominator, so that becomes minus, so it's minus beta plus 1, and then we've got the summation of all the x's. So that is now going to be summation from n for n i equals 1 of all of the xi's. So now we've got xi's. So that's the log of the xi's. Okay, so that takes care of that. It really, really should be put in an app term for the i here is the i one there so n log beta plus beta sorry minus beta plus one summation log of x i's that's our log likelihood 
Okay, so now what we need to do to find our maximum likelihood estimator, we just need to take the derivative of this, and then that will give us our candidate. So let's just move these off now. So now, okay, so now taking the derivative of this log likelihood of beta, so now we need derivative with respect to beta. Well, derivative of this with, with respect to beta, n is a constant, so then this equals n over beta. This one here, beta plus one, taking derivative of that with respect to beta, the one is a constant that disappears, then the beta just becomes one. So that just becomes minus one. And then this here is a constant, so there's no beta in there at all. So as it's multiplied by something to do with beta, we still have to leave it in. So then what we've got minus one times, let's leave that minus one times in there, i equals one to n, log of all the xi's. Okay, so now what we can do is we can just, to get the beta on its own, we can just set this equal to zero. So we let that equal zero. We then, let's put this on the other side, and then we get derivative with respect to beta equals n over beta, which equals sum of all the log of the xi's, i equals 1 to n, log of all the xi's. Okay, now just to get the beta on its own, we just multiply both sides by beta, and then what we can do is to get this over this side, we can just divide both sides by this. So then what we end up with is beta equals n over all the sum of the xi's. So i equals 1 to n divided by, so multiplied by the log of the xi's. So that's all that summation there. Okay, so that's our candidate for beta. So what we do is now, as it's a candidate, we just give it a hat. So that's what we do for now. Okay, now we want to find out if this is any good or not. So what we've got to do now is take the second derivative and see if it's less than zero. So that's our derivative here. So if I try to take that zero off, and we'll just write this candidate here. So beta hat equals n over the sum of all the log of the xi's. That's our candidate. So now I'm going to rub this off. And then what we can do is we can take the derivative of this with respect to beta. Okay, so second derivative with respect to beta. Right, n over beta. So that's basically n times b to the minus 1. So let's just write that there here as n to the beta to the minus 1. We now have that minus 1 comes out the front. So that's minus. n is a constant. That stays there. And there's beta to the minus 1. Now we can beta to the minus 2. But as it's in the denominator, it just becomes squared. And then we subtract the uh, derivative of this with respect to beta. Well, there's no beta in there at all. So this term conveniently just disappears. So that's our second derivative. Okay, so now what we need to know is, is this less than zero? Well, beta squared, and as beta is greater than zero, this is always going to be positive. So beta squared is always going to be larger than zero. So minus n over uh, beta squared, which is greater than zero, this is always going to be negative, because n is always going to be one or more. So this is negative. So therefore, our maximum likelihood estimate for beta, we can say that this is a good candidate. Okay, that solves that. Thank you very much.